Welcome, it's Dinom. In this video, we're going to answer the question, how good is dollar cost averaging really? So if you don't know what dollar cost averaging means, it just simply means that you buy uh, at timed intervals or you buy at certain conditions every now and then so you can get an average price for your investment. So you never go all in at some one individual time, but you buy at a multiple instances. And typically people buy at like one month or one week intervals. That's typically how people do it. So in this video, I will also give uh, a little bit extra strategy, how you can actually be get better price for your uh, investments as well. So here, if you were the absolute worst trader, I just wanted to get a number here that you would probably feel like, okay, I can get that number. So you would start actually buying at this all time high here, and that would be your first entry. And because you are the worst possible investor in the history of investors, the next time you buy is actually this peak here, then this peak here, this peak, 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 and lastly, you would buy at that, at this all time high again. So what average price would you get? Let's take a look at that one because I have already calculated everything. So here, these are the price levels for each peak here that I mapped out, and these are the calculations. So here, as you can see, you put $500 on each instance, just as an example here. So if you put $500 on each time, you would get at the all time high about 0 0.0255 Bitcoin. And here, if you bought the absolute lowest here, would be $4,400 and that would be 0 0.1136 36 bitcoin so you would get a lot more bitcoin here at the cheaper prices so it is always beneficial to buy at cheaper prices so this would actually be your current net worth with bitcoin so you would spend seven thousand dollars here and you would have about 0 0.7 bitcoin and with the current price of nineteen thousand three hundred dollars your value for your bitcoin would be thirteen thousand four hundred dollars so you would massively get better profit than almost any fund manager out there just in two years. So you would almost double your money in two years just with this worst of the worst uh, dollar cost averaging strategy. So I think that's super good, but you have to always pick a coin or a crypto that actually has good fundamentals and it can actually over, uh, exceed its uh, previous all time high. That's basically what you're looking at here. And Bitcoin, of course, most of us know that it can could do that. And now that it actually went through the all time high, now it's just proven itself one more time again but anyway you would be up about 92 percent on your uh, capital so if you just divide 13,400 with seven thousand dollars you would get this percentage here so you would be up by 92 uh, percent with your capital with the worst of the worst uh, investment strategy here to buy all the pumps in the world so if you just want to get a little bit more profit than this you can actually get a better average price for your uh, investment just by implementing some uh, strategy into your dollar cost averaging. So let's talk about that one. <clears throat> so the first strategy that I want to highlight here today is actually EMAs, which stand for exponential moving averages. So if you have a 50 AMA or 20 AMA, EMA, it just means that from the last 20 days, it takes an average price and maps a dot on this line here. So that would be the last 20 days for 20 EMA and 140 EMA would be 140 days and so forth. Typically people use 20 and 50 EMAs, but here I like to use 140 for my personal reasons, uh, which are not made for this video, but I just use uh, 20 and 140. Okay, I will explain it why. So <clears throat> when I use the daily view and I take a look at 140 days, that's actually 20 week moving average. So that's why I want to have the 140 here. But anyway, because seven days is one week. So 140 divided by seven is 20 weeks. So that would be the 20 week moving average here, exponential moving average, I mean. But the strategy here is that you take a look at, you have a, a slower moving average, which would, which would be the blue one here, and you have a faster moving average, which would be the green one here. So whenever the fast moving average is below the slow moving average, that's when you actually enter into the crypto or the asset. So here you would buy here, you would buy here, you would be able to buy somewhere here, and you would be able to buy somewhere here, able to buy somewhere here. Then you would not buy here, but here, here, uh, here, and uh, yeah, that would be the last time you would actually buy uh, Bitcoin 
with this strategy. So that's one strategy that you can actually implement. So you would get a pretty good average price here, but now you would have, have to sit on cash for long periods of time before you actually enter more into Bitcoin because the strategy just doesn't allow you to invest during this period. But anyway, that's one strategy. The other strategy that I actually covered in this video here, which I highly suggest to watch because it talks about the uh, technical analysis or the basics of technical analysis, how I find undervalued cryptocurrencies. So take a look at this video, it's really good for that. But <clears throat> there's a strategy there where you actually take a look at the weekly view here and you look at Bitcoin and you only look at the RSI here. So whenever the RSI basically below 40 uh, or 30, that's when you buy Bitcoin. So you would buy here and you would be buying here. And there was a time here before as well about here so you would get a really really good price for your bitcoin as well so that's one strategy there that you only buy during those times but then again you have to wait like a year before you can actually buy again so it will take a long time before that actually happens uh, <clears throat> the next time again but that's one way another way is just whenever there's a green number on bitcoin do not buy and uh, whenever you see a pump like this do not buy only buy, buy the pullbacks so if you only buy the pullbacks let's say you're uh, strategy says like <clears throat> only <laughs> if the price is 15% lower than the previous peak then I'm able to buy so if that was the case then you would just get a lot better, better price for your uh, average price as well with dollar cost averaging strategy so that's one strategy you can use and that's pretty much my strategy for all of my investing as well I typically when I invest into altcoins I never buy coins that haven't been dropping at least 30% that's typically my golden rule. I sometimes break it, but that's typically my golden rule that I always buy the pullbacks. I never buy the pumps. That's just me. You can use your own strategy, but for me, it has been working quite well. And at least I'm not getting the worst possible price. So <laughs> that's one strategy. Uh, what's the another strategy that I wanted to highlight here as well? Um, that was pretty much all the strategies there, but now let's just implement the strategy into altcoins as well so what i typically like to do with altcoins is that i have a favorites list on livecoin watch you can use it on coin gecko as well but i like to use livecoin watch because i can have all these charts here and i can see all these numbers and you can just customize this how you want and you can even have the from all time high number here as well and the issue is pretty cool because it takes a look at the current circulating supply compared to the uh, maximum uh, supply so you can see how much inflation there is left for this coin but anyway <clears throat> from this I typically like to uh, look at the seven day uh, numbers here so for example Orion it has pumping pretty hardly lately so I actually took profits on Orion not too long ago uh, I think that was yesterday morning when I did that I did take some profits and now it has already made a pullback so now I'm looking to enter Orion again if, it, if this pullback actually continues. If it doesn't continue, then I'm not buying Orion for now because it just doesn't match what I want to do here. Uh, TrustWap was, by the way, Orion, uh, my average price for Orion was about $2.4 at some point, but when it dropped down to $1.7, I was like, okay, I need to buy more Orion. So I doubled my position with Orion because it dropped so much. So my total average price was about $2. So now my capital went up or the average price for my capital went up to uh, about 50% that I invested into Orion. So it was a good investment anyways. But <clears throat> whenever you see that prices just keep plummeting, that's one more strategy is that if you look at a coin here and you think, okay, now is a good time to invest into that coin, just keep buying more if the price is actually going down. If the price is going up, you stop buying. So that's one strategy that you can use. And people always ask me, okay, what do you think, Dinom? Is this a good price to enter into this coin right now? And what I typically do myself is that just put 1% of your capital there or 2% if you think it's a good one. And if the price just keeps falling, just keep investing more in that coin if you think the fundamentals are super good for that coin. Because then you just get a better average price for your position and uh, you're never buying the pumps which is the worst situation ever if you buy a coin and then it drops 50% and then it keeps dropping another 50%. That's super, super, super annoying. So I just want to avoid that at all costs here. So one thing I just did 
with uh, Pulse actually is that I saw this pump here. So I did sell my Pulse tokens again, just because the pump here was pretty crazy already. So I did sell those and I did buy actually XOR token here because XOR, it's also like Pulse, they are both on the Polkadot ecosystem. And I do think that the Polkadot ecosystem will do really, really good in 2021. So these are basically the best coins that I have identified there. And just to see one of them pump 50%, but the other one has actually come down 10% from the previous seven days. So I'm like, okay, hmm, I think I will just convert my pulse into XOR tokens. So now I'm again, just my money are in the coins that haven't pumped yet. So XOR, it pump, pumped like two weeks ago, as you can see here, but now it had a pullback. So I invested uh, back into XOR and XOR, they have a uh, airdrop coming at the end of this month. So I think many people will still want to buy it as well. Anyway, that's what I did here. But if XOR keeps falling, that's when I will actually buy more XOR tokens also. And yeah, I did a lot of dollar cost averaging with SXP. So this is one way you can actually hurt yourself is that you enter into a coin and it just keeps falling and falling and falling and falling and falling and falling and falling. And falling. So yeah, it's super annoying sometimes, but uh, I have a really good, good uh, big position with SXP. I'm just waiting for it to pump. I know it will pump eventually, but uh, we'll see when that happens but anyway uh, i've been doing the same strategy and of course sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it does and that's why i always don't want to invest uh, uh, big amounts of my capital into single coins and uh, sxp is just an exception because i do think uh, it can actually pump from this one but we'll see how that goes uh, so one of the best ways i typically like to invest by the way energy web token here you can see it had a 22% uh, move to the downside from the last seven days. So this is a coin that I actually entered also uh, yesterday as well. So just taking a look at this one, I'm like, okay, the fundamentals are great. It just had a dump here. So I just started to, uh, or got into a position there. And if it keeps, keeps dropping, I will be buying more. So that's basically my investment strategy with dollar cost averaging is that <clears throat> whenever you enter a coin, you don't have to commit 100% into that coin at that price. You always, it's good to have some flexibility. If the price keeps falling, that you have some backup funds to actually buy more. And uh, if it keeps pumping, you just sell some of it. Like for now, I sold one third of my Orion after this pump happened. So if it makes a pullback, I will just buy more Orion back, but we'll see how that goes. But that's basically my strategy there is to make small gains over a period of time, sell whatever is pumping, buy whatever has been dropping. That's pretty much my strategy uh, out there as well. But that's just, I wanted to highlight how good dollar cost averaging really is. For the last two years, you would get 90% uh, profit just by dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. And it would be, um, you would be beating almost all fund managers out there. So the answer is dollar cost averaging is a great strategy, but just make sure that you also implement some other uh, like fine tuning for that strategy just to get a little bit better price for your average entry price. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you liked this video and in the future I will make more videos like this one. So consider subscribing if you like this kind of information as well. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you on the next video.